In this video, I want to show you how you can rank your data using the rank X DAX function in Power BI. I'm going to show you step by step on how to implement it so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So I want you to have a look at this scenario that I prepared for you today. It's a scenario that I built from the Northwind dataset. Now, uh, if we look at the visuals that we have here, I just have the categories of the products that have been sold uh, as total sales um, within their categories. So if we look at the data model here, we have a lot of information that we don't use. So I want you to pay attention to just a couple of details, such as the order details, where it tells you uh, the number of products that was sold and at how much. We have the product name, which is what product was sold and then another table called the categories, which puts those categories or those products into categories. Now, if we look back on our visual view here, we have the total sales, which is we calculated using the unit price and the quantity from our order details table. And the calculation, uh, we're using the SUMX to uh, do exactly that. So it does just the quantity multiplied by the unit price. So now we have this table where we show the total sales uh, of the products by category. Now we want to add a, another view here or another column to rank the data by total sales. And to do that in, uh, let's say in Power BI, we can use the DAX uh, that is made for it called the rank X. Now, before we head to the demo, I want to show you what it says on the documentation. So here's the documentation for the rank X DAX function. So we go to the description here. It says it returns the ranking of a number in a list of numbers for each row in the table arguments. So you'll see here it asks for a couple of things. Uh, it asks for a table and an expression and everything else. Uh, let's say the value, the order and the ties are optional. That's why they are surrounded by the box brackets here. So at the minimum, you need to provide the table that you want to rank and the expression. So at the minimum, you need to provide the table that you want to rank and the expression, which is the value that you want to rank it by. So I want you to pay attention to the remarks and the example at the bottom here where it gives you just the minimum parameters uh, for this uh, function. So you'll see first it defines the uh, table that you want to rank and then the expression, which is what you want to rank it by. In this case, it wants to rank the products by the internet sales in this example. However, you notice in the rank X on the first parameter here, it's wrapped around an all function and this is what gives your ranking, uh, your table, a row context in your measure. And I want to show you how uh, and why that is important later on. So if we go back to our Power BI report here, and we're going to create this new measure. Uh, let's say ranking sales, and we're going to type rank X. So here it asks us for a table. So for now, we'll follow the example. And for here, let will say that we want you to uh, give me the categories table all. So, so in this first parameter, we'll say we want the categories table and we want to wrap it around the all function. Our expression would be what we want to rank it by, in which case we are going to use the total sales uh, DAX function that we've created. And then we'll just leave everything else for now because they're optional. We'll just keep these two. Uh, to create the ranking sales measure. So now if we just put it in our table here and there you go. So you now if we rank it or sort it ascending, you'll see that it now gives us a ranking for all these different categories based on the total sales, the highest being number one and then lowest being uh, the number eight. So now that you know the basic implementation of the rank X, I want to show you a couple of things to bear in mind when using the rank X function. So let's go back to the measure here. 
And remember I told you uh, to just follow along uh, and just using the all function here to wrap the table in the categories table. Um, what it does um, is it gives us, or rather it gives this measure a context to say, I want you to give me a rank across all the categories table regardless of um, what raw context you're in. Um, and without this, the measure won't know uh, what the raw context is for your ranking. So let's say here, uh, let's try to remove this all function here. Okay, that's not what I wanted. So instead we just give it the categories. You'll see it just gives us one across all of these different categories because this is because the rank X in this measure doesn't have a raw context across the categories. It just gives us one value for each one and that's why it just has one uh, for each row. So this is why we have to wrap it with an all function to say, give me all the categories from this category ta table regardless of what is uh, in the visual context. The second thing that you'll notice is um, if you apply any filters on this table, so let's say I've created this uh, category name uh, selection uh, slicer pane here on the left hand side, and I'm gonna use control click to just select multiple categories in here. So let's say we wanna grab the first four here. You'll see the ranking sales uh, are still in the context of the whole of the category, not what is in the table, which is what you would expect. So you'll see that we have some missing rankings here because we haven't selected them in the slicer, but the expected results that you would want from here is to just rank the categories that are in this table. And to do that is actually pretty simple. Uh, if we go back to our ranking sales measure here, instead of the all function that we used here, we wanna use all selected, which essentially does the same thing as all, except that it uh, keeps the filters that comes uh, outside of this expression. So what that means is that any expression or any filters that are applied to it by let's say slicers, external slicers into this expression um, will be kept uh, in mind when evaluating the, um, the table within this uh, function. So it's pretty easy. We just say all selected within the categories table. We hit enter. So you see now, instead of keeping the uh, ranking across all the categories, it's ranked just the categories that we've selected from our slicer. So if we change the slicer, let's say we want to choose some random four or five uh, categories here, you'll see that the table ranks them accordingly. And if you wanna learn about the all function and its different variations, I actually covered it uh, in a previous video. So uh, check that out if you haven't yet. So now we've covered the basic implementation of the rank X. Now let's move on to the optional parameters that it has, which I rarely use, um, but it's good to know that it's there. So let's have a look at a couple of uh, parameters here uh, that I use. Uh, so there are three different optional parameters that you can give it. The value, which I don't use at all, and if you want to skip any optional parameters within your uh, your function, you can just leave it empty and add the comma. That will move you on to the next parameter, which is the order. Now, as a default, this would be descending. So the highest number will be first, but if you want that to be uh, the opposite way around, you just choose ascending. And then the second uh, and the last optional parameter that we have in the rank X is the ties. So how does the rank X deal with ties or uh, similar numbers within the rank? So the difference between dense and skip is not actually too complex, but it's easier to explain with an example. So I wanna show you something else here. So I've created an isolated table here called uh, uh, ties sample, which um, replicates a data sets that has some tie values in it. So when we rank them, we will um, get some ties somehow. So you'll see the regions here, and then you will have total sales 
in those regions. So you'll see two regions here, APAC and LATAM, would have the same value, same total sales. And what I have created for this table is a measure called total sales ties, which just gives us the total sales um, for this table here. So that's how we, we get this one. So now let's try to implement this ranking in our new isolated table here. So we'll do ranking sales ties. So we'll do the same thing. We'll say, I want you to give me the rank X from the tie sample. And actually we want to wrap this around all. And then the expression would be total sales ties and skip value, order descending. Let's hit enter and let's add this new measure into our uh, visual here. So here you see how the rank X deals with duplicate values within its uh, expression. So you see that uh, on the APAC and LATAM, because they both have the exact same value, they are tied in the same rank. And what happens on uh, anything after those duplicates, you'll see that instead of going four, which is the next in the sequence, it skips that uh, and then it moves on to the next one. So you see you have three, instead of having four, it skips five because there are two duplicates. If uh, there are multiple duplicates, let's say there, there is five more, it would skip that five and then it would be five, six, seven, eight, nine. The next sequence would be 10. So we'd skip all those five different ranks. So if we go back to our ranking sales here, we didn't define that. Um, skip is actually the default uh, way for rank X to deal with ties. So if you want your rank X to not skip a rank, so here, for example, on the EU, instead of five, you want it to show four, which is the next number in this uh, rank. You want to use dense. So if we change that to dense, you'll see that it changes that, uh, how it treats the EU ranking from five into four. And that's really it for this video. I hope it helped you understand how easy it is to start ranking your data tables in Power BI. And that's really it for this video. I hope it helped you understand how easy it is to rank your data tables using the rank X DAX function in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.